us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. And what they are drunken with is power. They are drunken with vain glory. They are drunken with violence. And God now is getting ready to come against this entire socio-political, economic, and military order. And, it, and but you know, the prophet Isaiah said, the morning is coming, but first the night. The morning of the coming age is upon us, but we must first endure the long night of repression. Because George Bush, just the other day, instituted the Office of Homeland Security. What that means is that he is going to empower the law enforcement agencies of America in a moment of national crises to suspend all constitutional guarantees. And they will be able to arrest anyone they want without even charging them with a crime. No, if you fight, then you will you will become one of them. We are sheep led to the slaughter, you see, because in our nonviolence, when you get a chance, just read this out loud to everybody. Right there, just read that out loud right there to everybody. This is almost what you're talking about. Read that right there out loud. I would humbly advise and implore the President of the United States that before he take this country into war to counsel with scriptural scientists who are among the Jews, the Christians, and the Muslims, there are those who have given their lives to the study of prophecy, and they can advise them so that as we put on the armor of battle, we will put on the whole armor of God. Amen. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's exactly that's right. That's exactly what you're talking about. And that's what we're doing. We're suiting exactly up. That's what you're talking about. We're suiting up. Right. Put down the armor of God so exactly we can quench the fiery darts right. of the wicked. Right. Right. And, that, and we got to make sure that we don't get pulled down into this system because very soon they're going to threaten us. Anybody who speaks about resisting war will become an enemy of this state. Yeah. Anyone yeah. who says anything contrary to the dictates of this government will be charged with treason and sedition. Civil war. Very soon. Yeah, but we're not to lift up a, a punch or a gun because you see, a whole new age is in the process of being born and that age must be based upon the foundation of absolute nonviolence. Faith in God, that God is responsible for these things and God will wreak vengeance on them when he touches, they touch God's anointed ones. Right. So, because the children who are alive a hundred years from now, if they look back and see that we protected ourselves and fought back, they'll do the same thing. Exactly. 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 So we have to set the foundation of that age and they will look back and say, oh no, the sons of daughters in that God were so brave that they did not even fight back with the brown church and they won. They won. We had, we, that's why when they took when they took religion service out, uh, even if you, whatever religion, when they took it out of school, they messed up. They yeah, messed no, right no, 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 no. They when they took it out of the school, they liberated my children from their pernicious doctrines. I do not want a teacher of this system praying with my children. I understand what you're saying. Because he, what he does is he entangles them in this political system, and it makes them think that being a true Christian means being a true American. So you mean, it's about, 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 so you mean they saying, they saying lies that sound true. I don't want but anyone not, confusing not my children's right, mind with prayer in front of an American flag. Like my little granddaughter, five years old, she, she goes to kindergarten now and the teacher yelled at her because she wouldn't say the Pledge of Allegiance. And she's five and now the teacher puts this pressure on her and of course how can a little five-year-old explain why she's not saying the Pledge of Allegiance? And she said, I'm not allowed to. But why is America lost the lost its faith in prayer? Because and America, also we, we're praying America now because of the war. This is the prayer. temple. Yeah. This is the temple. We have never uh, uh, lost the right to pray. I don't want them leading us in prayer. These are the sons of darkness. When they pray, they pray to false gods. They sacrifice like the devil. images and idols and yes, stuff like that. Yes, I don't want Even my in children the thinking. Church, you're really not supposed to be praying to no idol. I don't want my children thinking that to be a true Christian is to be a true American, because Christ is big. Christ is not an American. Christ is not a Jew. Christ is not a Muslim. Christ is the Lord of the universe, and we are all God's children. Even Osama bin Laden is God's child. He may be wayward. He may be in darkness, but he's. 
God's child. No, exactly. And we are not allowed to exact vengeance on anyone. And if we do, because remember what happened in the Garden of Eden? God put a mark on Cain because Cain killed his brother Abel. That's right. And then That's God right. said, if anybody punishes Cain, I will kill him. Because I am going to leave Cain walk as a vagabond in the earth all the days of his life. So we as God's children, who are like Abel and not Cain, we are not allowed to exact vengeance. We are not allowed to seek anyone's punishment. We are not allowed to see anyone. I don't want anyone to go to jail. That's the darkness of the Lord. Vengeance is God. So I don't. I wouldn't even strike back at Osama bin Laden because if I do, I'll disobey God's rule. Because God said I'm not allowed to strike Cain or in any of this. But, but he's taking it upon himself to do so. Because he is Cain. He is just like right. Osama bin Laden. Right. And that's why God has raised up the Muslims in the East to show us the spirit of darkness in the West. See, that, that so we can get out of it. But that has started World War II. Of course, and it's coming. That, that's what it started. And that's the Armageddon which is being which, which, which exactly. They say, they say um, um, the scientists the end, don't want to see it. The end of the world. End of the world and the birth of the new. Birth birth in new. Uh, um, genocide, basically. You know what I'm saying? It's just genocide. The United yeah, States, the United States is founded in genocide. Yeah. When it says, I saw a beast coming up out of the sea, yeah, right. that means that this is this age ending, greatest political empire that has ever existed on the face of human history. The United States is founded in genocide, it's founded in the enslavement of another people of God. It was built upon the backs of oppressed working people, child laborers. Now we've come to the end of the age, and America wants to pass itself off as the righteous nation. Right, which they have been, 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 been nothing but oppressed. Yeah. Uh, God so, has yeah. remembered her iniquity. Yeah. God yeah. has not forgotten. Yeah. That's how the country yeah. is. The same that's thing. Right. Remember what yeah. happened with Moses and, and the Egyptian? That's almost the same thing that's going on now because we were supposed to go over there and show them how to better themselves. We haven't. We put embargo on them and other little things on them. And that's why when they raise up, rise up against us, the first thing came out of the child's mouth of America. Well, why do they hate us so much? You know what I'm saying? Why do they hate us so much? Well, There's a reason the behind it. Of America, That's right. There's a lot of stuff yeah, behind yeah, America yeah. that they've been taught. Right. That they've right. been taught. They, they, so now it's coming back. And it's coming back to hit them in the face. It's coming back to hit them in the face. There's a book, I guess, a popular book called Blowback. That's right, Blowback. All the oppressions that the United States is responsible for now coming back. Yeah. The Archbishop of Chicago was speaking on the radio and he said, that 5,000 children per month in Iraq die excess deaths. Not normalized death, but 5,000 more children die per month in Iraq because of the sanctions. Uh -huh. Because of America's uh -huh. sanctions. 5,000 people died here in one day, 5,000 people they a month it. die in Iraq. And, and then uh, during, the, during the, Yugos, uh, the, uh, the, Yugos, the war in Yugoslavia, the United States was indiscriminately bombing civilian targets, killing people in trains and buses, mm -hmm. and they very cavalierly called it collateral damage. But when Timothy McVeigh, in his dark state of mind, did it same back to them, they were uh, they went went wild the about yeah. the term collateral damage. Yeah. The United yeah. States is, in Central America, the United States has engineered coups that have been responsible for the hand, death, the, the torture, mm. the killing of peasant people all over that uh, Central America, and now right. it's all coming back, and they are indignant about it. So they with the Indians too. Exactly. They gave the bees to the Indians, and it took a lot of stuff. So this is why it's called a holy. It's a holy war. war. But remember, war. our weapons are not carnal. Right. Our weapons are spiritual, for the pulling right. down of whole right. strongholds and right. every high right. thing that exalts right. itself against the knowledge of God. Right. We are not allowed right. to kill. We are not allowed right. to oppress yeah. our yeah. brothers. Yeah. We are yeah. not to take allowed. To, we're not even allowed as Christians to protect ourselves because we are as sheep appointed for the slaughter. And as soon as we lay down our lives in nonviolence, everyone will see where the evil is. And as soon as everyone sees where the evil is, the people, the people will come out. I have titles. I mean, it was Bible and addition and this and this book addition and titles. What's that? Can I have titles of this book and titles and Bible? It's just the Bible. It's just the King James Version. It's the old, the King James Version. Can I have one of your cards? No. Thank you.
you know how to break this down? You know how to break this down right here? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know how to break this down right here? To break this down, that's, he only loves you. Right? He, oh, wow, he only that. loves oh. you, you know what I'm saying? Talking okay. about, you know what I'm saying? Say okay. that again. He only loves you. See what I'm saying? That's basic instruction before leaving Earth. Wow, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> so, that right there. I never saw that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, you know. Yes. Yes. I mean, I always, I always, here you go, Justin. I mean, but. It's beyond, it's, it's, it's beyond religion. It's not just, you know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's beyond religion. It's higher religion. religion. You know what I'm saying? It's higher. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's a um, website size. It's just religion like that. You know what I mean? There's nothing to sell on there. What it is, it's just a book that we have published on the website so that people can have access to it for free. So. So, uh, do you have access to a computer? Okay, so uh, what you can do then is you don't have to, if you're interested in any part of it, you don't have to print the whole thing, but you can take out pages and print them for yourself if you're interested. And um, there's all these illustrations are on there, and um, the commentary is on there. And so you can just take down any parts of it that you want. Um, it would be too expensive to take down the whole thing. That's why uh, my friend Tim is getting ready in the uh, time ahead to try to put this in a book format so that we could give it, uh, put it on CDs that we can give it to people and that they could be, then just print it in like a little book. Uh, but as when long as we have access to it. When will be available this book? Pardon me? When will be available this book? Uh, I, we don't know. It'll just... as. as as we, yeah, somewhere around January, as we have the uh, the resources. And, uh, we want you to write it down. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. oh wait a minute. Only loves. Basics. Basics. Take a few. Instruction. Bible. Basic instruction. Oh, man. Yes. Yes. See it there, it's like it is. Yeah. Probably see you in jail. Sorry, that, man. Oh, my daddy, hey, you know what I'm saying? Being a, oh, how can I say, revolutionary, you know what I mean? And, 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 and protest the world uh, against these and stuff like that. They, they don't want people to hear the truth about certain facts and stuff like that. Oh, that's why, that's why where you might meet me at. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, all through facts and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? They don't want to hear, they don't want to hear certain things. They say they know the fact, they know the truth. Uh, how you been? I'm good, how are you? Good, good to see you. Good day. Tim, did you have, what you see? What's your name, man, fucker? Oh, what's your name, man? Mike. Mike? All right, Mike. Danny. I'm with you. All right. Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Yeah, because in the Bible, he was a prophet. Yeah, basically, basically, all right. Yeah. See you at the wedding. Oh, before that. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You thought about the, the, the wedding, the great wedding feast that God's created oh, they, for all, all of us. Oh, yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah, I know you're saying. Table after. Table, right, right. I got what you're saying. All kinds. I understand what you're saying. Mama's kitchen. Mama's kitchen. Uh, you got plenty of room for everybody hey, to come and sit at the table. Wow, that's the kitchen. My mother, she's getting ready to set a table for her children. In your website, you break all this down in your website, yes. right? Yes. I have a call. I have a call. Yeah, everything is there in, in the chapters. So just that, you know. Yeah, well, I hear you. I hear you. No one's mom kitchen in the that's not where I'm going. See? Do you have to be able to be I hope not, because I'm not. <laughs> uh, all we have to do is be. Yeah, you know, this transcends religion. What it is is doesn't 
natural connection that exists between the heart and the mind of every single human being and the mind of the universe. The mind of the universe is God. God dwells everywhere. There's nothing that is not God. Once you make that connection, you will be called irreligious by religious people. Because you find out you don't go to church anymore. There is church. Everywhere you go is sacred. Every spot that you put your foot is holy ground. Because you will see there is nothing but God. God. Buddhism sort of teaches the same symbols to themselves. Of course, in order to be a true Christian, you must be a true Buddhist. God is within you. I'm God. I'm my own God. I'm yeah. myself. As long as we don't get our ego confused and think that I am it. No, I know exactly because what I mean. Some people tend to rely on, like, say, oh, I can't pay my rent this week. Let me pray to God only help me get my rent. No. It's going to be something. Well, yeah. Everybody has their own needs and connections. You get things done, you get away from anything that's possible in life. Have you heard of that uh, you have a book called Noble Red Man by uh, R.I.P. Arden? No. I mean, it's interesting. It brings another perspective from all this. From a, uh, yeah. Indigenous American I just spent. Uh, have, you, have you heard of Matthew King? I'm not sure. He's a great, great, great Lakota spiritual oh, elder. I was just out there in the reservoir. I just was out at Pine Ridge. I was there too. The, in How long ago? This, I was there in uh, June. Well, I was there in August? September. September. September? Yeah. It's nice. So we're about to South Dakota. Well, and so this month, you were here. Yeah. This yeah. is September. Yeah, this is September. Like, you left my house August 30th. Oh, okay. See, my friend lives in, uh, Tim lives in San Francisco. Yeah. And they invited me out. And they gave me a little itinerary of sacred places, places to, to go. go. I went up to Bear View and I prayed on the mountain. And, and I went to Rosebud Reservoir and Wings of Knee, of course. Yeah. And then went down to uh, get a light? the Paiute Reservation in Nevada, where uh, the prophet Lavoca, uh, Lavoca was the prophet who began the ghost dance movement in America. Really? At, uh, the end of the 18th century, uh, 19th century, which resulted in the slaughter of Rudy's wounded man. Wow. Yeah. So, uh -huh. And so uh, tell me about your trip. Um, well, I went there with, uh, I went on a road trip there with two other friends of mine, and uh, we went to uh, go um, no, no, no. to uh, yeah, attend he's, he's up. <laughs> to attend the uh, the, uh, Leonard, the Pine Ridge shootout commemoration, uh, which led to Leonard Peltier's incarceration. Ah, did you go over to Wounded Knee? We didn't go to Wounded Knee. Yeah, I, I, I wish I did. I'll be back. I'm going back there. You are. Where are you from originally? Cambridge, Massachusetts. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but now I'm living here. I just moved. I moved here yesterday. So, in New York City? In New York City. So I'm going to be here for a year. Are you going to be around here again? Yeah, Come here be often? Here to the end of the holy days. In, uh, in, here in, in this area? Yes. A friend of mine, uh, Paul, she lives upstate, and she asked if I wanted to ride down Yom Kippur's Thursday. The day of the but she asked me if I wanted to ride down Friday to Washington. They were having um, supposed to be a big, massive anti-war demonstration in Washington on Saturday. I'm going to go to that. And so, you going to that? Yeah, I'm going to ride down with her and uh, spend the weekend there. And uh, uh, not that I'm demonstrating against the government, because I don't demonstrate against this government. But I'd like to have a time of talking with the demonstrators. Because the, the way this system collapses is if we just drop out. You see, it loves for us to right. demonstrate against it because then it imagine when you put an action into something, it creates and then, an action to come back. Yeah, and it empowers them because right. then they get the feeling that they are very liberal There's and benevolent, and they let us uh, they let us um, uh, demonstrate. But if we all of a sudden stop demonstrating against them and start coming out of the system and creating our own new state of consciousness, mm -hmm. then that will come on down. Let's get have a new center. A new center out in the center other, of the universe, out in the center of the country somewhere. Does that system include other leaders in other parts of the world? Well, it's happening here intentionally. Once it happens here, it'll happen anywhere. But right here is where the mystery of light and darkness is unfolding in its most concentrated way. This is right here. This is the, New York City is the center of the universe. Uh, it even told that it's it, it, it said yeah. it's so itself. Like the millennium. I feel that you, you are demonstrating. I, I, I feel like I want to do something. I feel like it's a positive thing to go out and demonstrate some peace and wear a banner Force that says... Yeah. That, that says... That says... 
the evil is within such and such. Yes. So how do you differentiate between between like you say you shouldn't, you shouldn't demonstrate against protest? Um, no, what I'm saying is, I'm not saying that you shouldn't stand bold in the face of the system. But our message should not be, let's change the system. Our message should be, let's get out of that system and drop out. It doesn't mean we shouldn't stand in front of the White House and say, hey, let's come out of this system. So you stand bold against the system, but not with the idea of changing the system. Because if this system yields to us, even in the slightest way, it just increases its measure of deception. Because it really can't change and won't change. So we must say to ourselves at these rallies, look, come out, come out. Come out of the system. I gotta go, but it's nice. See at the, uh, uh, wherever the spirit leads. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, hi. 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 Have to observe religion, yes? No, I observe all religions. All the religions have rituals that lead us to higher state of consciousness. Because, because God is only one. Only one. Only one God and only one true religion. Some of us are coming as Buddhists, some as Christians, some as Jews, some as Muslims. What is true religion? True religion is love. Love. True love. Where you harm nothing, you harm no one. Do not harm the planet. Do not wish evil on another person. Overcome anger within yourself, within ourselves. Just express at all times the love and the compassion of God towards the planet. And this, of course, this love is being created by God in, out of the matrix of darkness and hate. You see, because if God did not create the opposite, we could not come to the light. That's why God has shown us all the evil. Because if God didn't create the evil, we could not come to the good. If we didn't know what evil was, we wouldn't know what love is. Exactly. Exactly. We have to keep the faith. Like it says here, man. Keep the faith in the right here, man. Listen, my beloved brethren. Has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith? Exactly. And heirs of the kingdom of God, which he promised to them. Exactly. Because we can't say we love God unless we love our fellow person. Exactly. You, can't, you can't confess the love of God if you hate other people. Yes. Exactly. Oh, I'm to see you uh, when? Uh, yeah, when? Um, I see you have the zodiac signs. I was yes. Why. Well, you see, the very last, the very last. Hey, have access to the computer? The very last chapter in the Old Testament, in the Christian Old Testament, it says, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. And all the proud and all that the wicked shall be stubborn. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. But when the sun rose upon the earth 2,000 years ago, at the time of Passover, the religion that we know of as Christianity came to power in the earth. Right? Well, when the sun rose upon the earth, all the mysteries of ancient Egypt, all the mysteries of the ancient East were all fulfilling themselves in this now emerging mystery of Christ. And because the mystery of Christ is understood in the motions of the sun, from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun in the East, in the West, that the mystery of Christ then had to be attended by 12 signs, which are the 12 apostles. So the 12 apostles are a symbol of the 12 signs of the Zodiac, just as in ancient times, the 12 tribes of Israel were a symbol of the signs of the mystery of God. So now God commanded us to observe Passover. 
in this time of the year, in the first month of the holy year, which is in the spring of the year. This is the first month of the Hebrew year. And you see it's the sign of Aries. Aries is a symbol of the divine father, right? The ram. And Christ is a symbol of the son of the father, right? And so Christ was called the lamb of God. You see, behold the lamb of God. And so we are following the mystery of the lamb of God, who is Christ. But you look into the east, and you see the ram standing out there just watching. The ram is a symbol of all the powers of the east that God has saved for himself against the battle of day, the day of battle and war, when the Lamb of God would be captive to the system of darkness in the last day. That's why we see God rising up now in all the powers of the Eastern world. The eye of the East, because he is the Father and he's fierce. He's the Lamb. Well, we have now come to the sign of the balances, where it says, blow the trumpet in the new moon, in the days of hunger. Now this is the sign we're commanded to do this in the seventh month of the year. See, Leviticus 23. It says, in the, in the 14th day of the first month, that even is the Lord's Passover. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the week. That's why Christians celebrate Sunday. Is that like all the sevens in the in the uh, revelations? Exactly. What's exactly. <laughs> exactly. Seven is the number symbolizing the mind coming to perfection. And then it goes on to say here that when you finally come to the seventh month, it says, Now speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, which is the new moon, Day when the new moon appears, which was last uh, week, we began to lift up. It says, "Ye shall have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. All the people should start to gather together." That's why over here, right? it's happening now. That's exactly what you're seeing everywhere. Pardon me. Yes. I see you have Scorpio. John Mark. Yes. Well, I'm a Scorpio. I wonder why. Well, of course. Well, because the Scorpion is one of the signs that the Book of Ezekiel used to describe the mystery of this unfolding mystery of Christ. So now you see here. Right now, we are moving out of the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius, right? This is the dawning of Aquarius. Okay, now, 2,000 years ago, the world moved into the age of Pisces at the time of Christ. That's why these two fish became symbols of the sign of the Christian mysteries. And remember it says that Jesus fed the multitude with two fish? Well, that's the, sign of, the, the, the symbol of the sign of Pisces, that we have been being fed with the wisdom that has been being passed to us throughout the course of that whole age. We have been feeding on this wisdom. Now you go back 2,000 years before that, and the ram, that was the time when Abraham appeared, and that was the Vedic age. And then of course, when you go back 2,000 years before then, there's the sign of Taurus. That was when Adam was in the Garden of Eden. And if you take a look at North America, you see that North America is a great big ox. You see that North America is an ox, see Alaska is the head, and Ala there's the Aleutians is the horn. All of Canada is the forefront of this great ox. The United States is the loins or the strength of this great creature, and of course, uh, the tail is Central America. And so the prophets told us that when they finally came to this time, the dragon and the uh, and the great ox would appear and they would begin to wage a war in the last days. So Taurus is where these mysteries began in the Garden of Eden. So what we have done, you see, we have returned. But then where's the dragon Europe and, and when the trouble is with the Middle East? Pardon me? Why is, why is the dragon Europe when the trouble is with the Middle East? Okay, because right here in the center of Europe, 
is an ancient Jewish oh, the ancient city. Jerusalem, right, okay. I remember right. that from the last time. All right, yeah. and that's where the Zionist movement began, yeah. out of Vienna. Okay. And when the Jews went to the Middle East, that that's ignited right. Right. all right. the okay. problems that is happening between Jews and Arabs, which right. resulted in the bombing of the World of Trade course. Center. Of course, yeah, okay, I get it now. Uh, you no. see, it's all connected, it's all tied Right up. now we're living in an age of Aquarius. We're entering it. And that's why... What are we exactly in? We're moving out of Pisces into Aquarius. So you see the symbol of the two fish? Well, in the astrological table, those are the, the feet. You see, a, a Pisces is a symbol of the feet. And we are now at the feet of the mystery. And we are moving out of this age into the age of Aquarius. And that's why the Gospel says that when you finally come to Jerusalem, which is where we are, that you will see a, a man carrying a pitcher of water it's in the book of Luke. It says, when you see him, follow him. And if you follow him, he will lead you into an upper room. What that means is that when we finally come to this end of, to the birth of this age, all the wisdom that you see unfolded as a result of our passing into this age, stay with it, follow it, follow it, because you will finally be led into a higher state of consciousness. So just don't fall back. Okay, so, looking at another way, we find that we have now come to the end of the age. The sign of the scales, we see everything is out of balance. Now God is getting ready to put everything back in balance. And you see the sign of Virgo? Well, this is the sign that is descending to us because we are blowing the trumpet in the new moon. The new moon is a symbol of the feminine principle of reality. Just as the sun is a symbol of the masculine principle, the moon is a symbol of the feminine principle. And it says, blow the trumpet in the new moon, because now the Divine Mother is descending to us. And as Revelation 12 says, I saw a woman clothed in the sun, and she had uh, she was travailing in birth, and she was crowned with a crown of 12 stars. Well, that's God. And now it says here, and you shall do no, it shall be a memorial of the blowing of trumpets. You shall do no servile work therein. You must not be a slave to any system because we are God's children and we're commanded to be free. And it says here, and you shall, and the Lord spake unto Moses saying, on the 10th day of this month, of the seventh month, shall be a day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation. So right now we are experiencing what is known as the 10 days of awe, from Rosh Hashanah last week to Yom Kippur, which is coming Thursday. These are the 10 days of awe in which all of God's children were told to contemplate, to look up, to be aware of what is unfolding in the world. Because when you finally come to that one specific year, God will judge the world at this time. And now we see it unfold. We see the judgments, the judgment wars begin. Just two days ago, George Bush is rising up. He's getting ready to advance into Afghanistan. He's getting ready to bring the American forces into the mouth of the dragon and into the heart of Asia. Okay, so now we see that the prophets always use these signs to hide other meanings because they knew that the mystery of the sun passing through these 12 signs would be the mystery of God's presence in the soul of every individual. What day were you born? Okay, so that means this mystery was born in you that day. This whole mystery. Because the day you were born, the sun was rising in Scorpio, but it didn't stay there. Because it went to here, and went to there, and went to there, and went to there, and went to there. And went to there. The day you were born, the sun passed through all of these signs because this whole mystery is right here in the Just as it is in every soul of the curiosity you want to find out. Yes. Now, to understand the relationship to Scorpio, to all of these signs, what we do is just go to the book of Ezekiel. And the book of Ezekiel is the book that describes the meaning of this mystery. And this mystery is the basis for the entire science of the Kabbalah. The Kabbalah has everything to do with trying to understand not only the meaning, 
of this ancient symbol called the Tree of Life, but of the fact that hidden in this symbol is the mystery of the Kabbalah, the Makabah, the, uh, the, the chariot throne of God. God rides upon this chariot, and it is the chariot of history itself. It's the chariot. Oh, thank you. And so, so it says here that Ezekiel, he says, and I was standing there in Babylon, and I was by the river Chabar, and the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. But what he saw was this. He saw the history of Western man and culture. And he says, and I looked, and I behold a whirlwind come out of the north. And it came, what he saw was the history of Western man. And it says, and a great cloud of fire unfolding itself. Well, this is all symbolism that I won't burden with you because it's all on that website. And it says, and out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. And these are the four living creatures, the four cardinal points of the zodiac, which make up the symbol of the cross. And it says, and they had, and this was their appearance, they had the likeness of a man. And so when we look into the mystery we see in the Christian mystery, is that the universal man is suspended on the limbs of this cosmic tree. And who is this man? He is the Lord who dwells in the sum of all reality. And the reason he revealed himself on the limbs of the cosmic tree is because those of us who enter into this mystery must begin to crucify our old nature. We must begin to die to our old nature so that we can come alive to the divine state of consciousness that dwells within us. So that's why the Christian mysteries is all about a cross because we must crucify ourselves in order to come alive. We must, I mean, we must destroy our ego, we must destroy our greed, our lusts, our, all of these things die to our old nature so that we can come alive to who we truly are, which is sons of God. And then it says, and as for their likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side. So you see the lion? You see the man? I take this line and I put it on the and now I begin to see that this is where John the Baptist appeared 2,000 years ago and that's why the sign of Taurus is a symbol of the priesthood the Christian priesthood the, not the Catholic priesthood the true priesthood that has for 2,000 years been opening up a furrow in the consciousness of humankind sowing the seed of understanding into it so finally, we come to the end of the age, which right here, right there, is Scorpio. Now, huh? Well, Scorpio symbolizes what is happening in our time right now. So now we can open up this book. And it says, And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet. And here we are, we're at the feet of the mystery of Christ. And the Spirit entered to me, and, I, and I, he said, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, a rebellious nation. So this is right here. All the Jews and Christians who have come here, who are all attached to this political system, they are rebellious. He says, they will not listen to you. He says, and whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, yet shall they know that there have been prophets among them. And he says, Thou son of man, be not afraid of that. You see, that's our instruction. We're not to be afraid. Just stand bold because... And it's this, this whole system is the Lady Babylon, Yes, right? absolutely. Yes, yes. This is false religion. The whore of Babylon. Exactly right. And it says, And it says, Neither be afraid of them, nor of their words, though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dost dwell among scorpions. And of course now, so here's the sign of Scorpio playing out right here. And what he means by the, the does dwell among scorpions, well, the Apostle Paul describes the meaning of it in the book of Corinthians, where he says, he says, so finally, he says, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. 
So when this corruption shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? You see? So these words are now coming to pass. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Because we are now coming to an understanding of this parallel universe that's hidden right here in the center here that we are children of eternity and all we have to do is come to the doorway of this mystery which is right here in the heart of every child of God we find our path right into the parallel universe higher worlds and e eternal life and so it's uh, is this the New Testament or the Old Testament it's, of the it's, Bible? it's both sure because there's only one true religion, and we're all coming by different ways. Some are coming as Jews, some as Christians. Now, I don't understand what this tor uh, Taurus and the horoscope. Passover. Yes, for Jews. It's for Christians. That's why, that's why, you see, when Passover began 2,000 years ago, the Apostle Paul was teaching us the true meaning of Passover. And so he said to us, he said, you see, you know how you're supposed to not, the, the Jews will not eat leavened bread for seven, you know, for seven days. They purge the leaven out of their house. You see, because the law of Passover says that the Jewish people must go into their house and the little children take a little brush and they take all the bread out of the house. All the leaven, all the because that's what God told them to do. To get rid of all the leaven in the house because the leaven represents the sin that rises up in the hearts of individuals when we don't correct it. So Paul says, now purge out therefore the old leaven that you may be a new lump as you are unleavened, for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. So in the beginning, the Passover lamb, which is the mystery of Christ, now begins to be sacrificed for us. And of course, the Passover lamb sacrifices himself in the life of every single individual who ever died for the mystery of Christ. That's, that's, I understand. That's only Christian. No, this no. is Christian. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So, you see the Jews eat matzah? Because Paul is saying, this is what that means, that that matzah is a symbol of the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. But just symbol. It's symbols, exactly right. The symbols have meaning. And unless we understand the meanings, we will lose the meaning. So we must observe, the Jews observe the rituals, Christians observe the meaning. But nevertheless, we must observe Passover in one form or another. Now, it doesn't mean that a Buddhist can't observe Passover in their own way. And by a Buddhist observing means that they just purge themselves of wickedness. Exactly. So therefore, don't do it. Just make sure that you purge yourself of your old past uh, uh, opinions about the world. Get rid of your old nature and come alive to a new state of consciousness where you're no longer judging people, you're no longer condemning people, you are loving all individuals. That's keeping Passover. Keeping Passover. Can I, can I say something? But the, the point is, you can't live without the blood and the body of Christ, which is community. That's the, exactly the, right. That's exactly communion. Right. Exactly right. The communion. The, your acts doesn't help you to go to heaven. What's that? Your acts. If you, if you don't condemn anybody, be nice. Your duty. Your nice well, to well, my brother. My he brother. Said, he said, by me, you go to heaven. Yes, but that means by me. That means he by you. He crucified. Now he crucified. He's still for you. being crucified. No, no, no. Anyone come to me? No, no. I'm going to be crucified no, no. for you. No, no, that's, that's a okay. matter of ma This is where Christ is crucified no, in he, each individual. He is God. Okay. In the Old Testament, it was simple. Yes. It was simple. Yes. 
The people they did it as a simple. They yes. follow the law of Moses. Yeah. Whoever God he gave the laws to the Moses and they call him, you follow the law of Moses Ten Commandments. Yes. Until until my begotten son come to show the whole world the salvation, okay. redemption. Now now listen, stop talking. I'm not this I'm stop day, you. This Let day me finish. Listen, Let me finish. This day I, I am not talking about the day. day. No one knows the days until even the angel, even the archer angel, no one knows. When they ask him, Nicodemus, when they ask Jesus, he said, Buy me only the salvation. Jesus came By to fulfill Christ, all right? the prophecy of Jewish. He was Jewish, but he came to to fulfill the prophecy. Alright, and what is that saying here? The love. He put himself to salvation. God spoke to Adam. He spoke to the whole entire Jewish people in the Old Testament by different prophecies. No one listened. Moses was on top of the mountain, delivered the Ten Commandments. He went down, he found the people worship the idols. Today, oh, today you the got money, one on your shirt. The money. The you money. got one on. No, the no, money. no. The, the money. idols anything, of Baal. Anything out of the God that's made the idol. idol off your shirt. If you love anything else on the <laughs> earth, more desire than God. That's but you can't idol. just be talking if you do not live your conviction. Exactly. But All right, so live the conviction Jesus. by getting rid of the no. idol. No, Jesus, he said, you give to Caesar what is Caesar. No. And to God what okay. is God. I mean, you taxes, stop you pay it to taxes. I, I want to stop this. No, I'm when just they, telling you. When they came to Jesus, they yeah. said, Lord, is it lawful to give to Caesar? Of course. Yeah. Now, the your scripture pay, says, the scripture pay the says, governor, you pay the taxes. The scripture everything. says, Jesus yeah, perceiving sure. their wickedness. No. Ah, the okay. scripture says, when they came to Jesus and they said, is it lawful to give unto Caesar? Jesus did not say it was lawful. It says in the scripture, he perceiving their wickedness mm -hmm. said unto them, why tempt me, you hypocrites? Yeah. When they asked him if it was lawful to give unto Caesar, he said that they were wicked for even asking the question. Because these Caesars are slaves. They are in darkness. And we are told, have no fellowship with, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove it. So he said to them, Show me a coin. coin yeah. Show me a coin. Exactly. And he, they, he said to them, Who's in flex, who's, who's is inscription space. on it? Caesar. Caesar. And what does it say on here? In God we trust. God. Well, who is their God? Caesar. Okay. So he said to them, Therefore, give unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and give unto God the things that are God's. And it said, They went away and they could not take hold of his saying. Because, he's because you are saying, no, give no, to he, Caesar. No, you was, cannot was take saying. hold of his saying. We are not allowed to give anything to Caesar. Caesar, the scripture says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and them that dwell therein. Caesar himself does not even belong to Caesar. Why would God give us to Caesar? No, what does mean now or right now? We, no, what does mean? Somebody who represents yeah, no, that, he that does he, not no, represent no, no. me. We are the sons of God, and we have no, no, nothing no. to do. Jesus paid. Jesus paid tax. No, no. My Jesus. security comes from no, no. God, and God is destroying no, 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 America. No, 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 no. My security no. comes from the from Caesar. No, 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 well, there no, you no, go. no, 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 no. One second. I have One ten second. years in the military service, friend. I have paid my dues. One second. And in there, wait, in there, the military needs our full support. No, it does not. No, no, it does not. The script does not need our support. The script, no, no, no. The script, the script, and the book. Solidarity to stand behind the Pharisees. The Pharisees. Listen, listen. One second. The Pharisees. What I have here is two Americans arguing against the gospel. No, The scripture says, "Come out of her, my people." The scripture says, "I heard, I saw an angel come down from heaven." The heaven was lighted with his glory. And it says, I heard a voice from heaven saying, Babylon the great is fallen, it is fallen. It has become the habitation of devils, the hold of every foul spirit. This is the United States of America. And another voice said, come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, that you receive not of her plagues, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered America's iniquities. And how much she hath glorified herself. How much she has said, I am a queen. I, I shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her judgments come in one day. 
We as Christians are not allowed to join military service. We are not allowed to kill human beings. We are not allowed to serve Caesar. And that's why God is destroying America. You're because of America our apostasy. Babylon. It is it's Babylon. A, it's an interpretation on your beliefs. It is not the word of the Bible. Oh, Jesus, the Jesus, the himself, Jesus himself, he paid tax. They came to him, he told him, are you supposed to pay tax? He told Paul, Didn't go, no, no, go, to, go to the sea. Yeah, Peter, go go fishing and to bring the fish and he found coins and he paid for me and now, you. What is the mean? Tax. You have to respect the rule you, of the country. Of course. Whatever is wrong. And God, he in charge. You're not just you using words, me. but there's no meaning. They what, came what to him and they said, Caesar? does your master pay Caesar tribute? Now? What does mean Caesar to you now? Do, does your master... What does it mean? To respect the constitution? To respect, to pay tax? Come out. Come out of the system. There is no nation so great that have all these laws so wonderful as the laws that God has given to us. Which nation is so great? None. Which nation, nation can call unto God as the children of Israel can call unto God? None. No, he said, any, is, yeah, he said no. anyone come to me, he'll be children of him. Exactly. It doesn't have to be exactly. Israel, Jewish exactly. or Chinese. Or but anyone come all, to me, he's God my is son. not an American. God is not a Christian, God is, God is not a Jew, and God cares no, no, nothing yeah. for it. Yeah. All the I nations know if God before cares about America or not. Maybe he wants America to win this war. To How do you know? Off the face of our exactly. The scriptures, which one? This war is coming against America because no. of its wickedness. You no, know, you know, no. How do you know that? Because fanatics. How do you know the will of God? How do you know the will of God? How do you know the will of God? I'm going to show you. The will of God. Do you know, how do you know the will of God? I'm going to show you. What oh, his plan. His plan to do this against this. He's the only one to judge the, the human being. No one can has con to condemn anybody. No one can condemn. The evil is evil and the right is right. And Jesus, he said, no prophet after me. And he said, anyone take by, sea, by, by soul or use a gun, by the gun get killed. This is an advice. Well, isn't that what we're saying? Okay, that's what he's going to so do. That's that, what military they're going to do. 20,000 people die. What do you want to do? That if you wait 15, 20, 20 years more, you can find all the Muslims if killing the people. If anyone kills how do you know that? by the sword, they shall die. He told them, Paul, anyone... Where's the, the problem here? If no. anyone kills by the sword, they shall be killed with the sword. Okay, that's what they Where's the problem here? You're, you're if we kill with the sword, we'll die by the sword. What are you talking about? Exactly. 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 They just throw 20,000 innocent. Can anybody see the dragon? Yeah. Take a look here, you folks in the back. Take a look at the continent of Europe. You see that Europe? Exactly. You see that Europe? It has nothing to do with God. I come from West Virginia. I know who the enemies of Mother Earth are. Do you know Islam is not a religion? Do you know Islam? The enemies of Mother Earth are Dick Cheney and the exploitation companies, the coal companies, the oil companies, the timber companies. I know what they're doing to Mother Earth because I live in the shadow of their ruins. We all do. All right. So these are the ones who destroy the Earth. And that's why this Revelation 13 says, the day is coming that God will destroy them who destroy the earth. These are the earth God destroyers. God attack us, a bunch of sick fanatics did. Nothing has, God has no evil. The prophet, the prophet Isaiah, and there shall be upon every high mountain, which means every great nation, and upon every high hill, rivers and streams of waters in the day of the great slaughter when the towers fall. And moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, because God is now